Because you mentioned in the introduction that this is the third film that you filmed in India, but the first one that's actually about India or that's an Indian story. It's also your third Thomas Hardy adaptation. Uh, kind of how and when did you start about to think about bringing those two things together? Uh, we were looking at locations in Rajasthan, actually in Ossian, the place that we filmed the film, m most of the filming, about eight or nine years ago on a film called Code 46. Mm -hmm. And uh, whilst I was there, it seemed to me there were a lot of parallels between the kind of society there, the rural society there, and the society described by Hardy. I mean, in, in Tess and in other books like Jude, he's describing kind of a, sort of s a village life that has been static and, and fixed for a long time, stable communities that are changing through kind of transport, through new the coming of the railway, through the mechanization of the farms, the urbanization and education. And all those kind of factors seem to be sort of uh, present in India in a kind of even more concentrated, even more extreme form. And you wrote the script, which is your the first time of writing a kind of Hardy adaptation solo. What was the sort of most difficult, most challenging part of that? Well, calling it a script is probably an exaggeration. And, and you know, <laughs> Frida and, and Riz and, and all the other people in the film contributed a lot to the detail of the dialogue. A lot of the other actors in the film are actually non-professional actors and, and sort of playing a version of themselves. So the family that Frida's in is a kind of family of a jeep driver in Ossian. The dancers, are the dancers, the pe the women in the hotel working in the hotel are women who work in the hotel. Yeah. So they all brought a lot of that themselves and their character and, and detail to the film. So the script was really the sort of basic adaptation of the Hardy story to 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 Rajasthan. But then after that, Frida and other people contributed lots. And Frida, you said in the beginning that you know you had some good memories of shooting an independent film in India previously, and you know now you have good memories from shooting this one, but. That can't have been the only motivation for wanting to be part of the film. Can you talk a little about, you know, what it was that, that made you want to do this? Michael Winterbottom. <laughs> and the fact that it was a classic uh, novel that I had read before, and it was rather intriguing to, to kind of even think about how it was going to be adapted to an Indian setting. Well, yes, going back to India was another draw, definitely another draw. Um, the fact that I knew that Michael works with a very, very small crew, something that I had never done before, I thought would be a great learning experience as well. And, you know, every actor wants to sink their teeth into something so um, depthy and gritty. Mm. And very often scripts like that are not available, especially for minority <laughs> actors. Mm. So when you, when you do get that opportunity, I don't think you think, look anywhere else. It's an immediate yes. And the last thing I wanted to ask you was, you know, in terms of how the film was made, it always seems that Michael is very democratic in terms of the shooting of the film. I suspect that means that you were not given star treatment. And I'm, I was happy about that. I was happy about not having the star treatment. What happens is, I guess, um, you go onto a film set expecting to have a makeup van and someone fussing over your hair and makeup. And those things, as good as they are for certain films, for some films are distractions. And so for me, not having any of that, but being living the 5 a.m. morning breakfast with the family the way they did it, milking their cows and goats at the time they actually did it, to you know walking to school when the children had to go to school, to see, in th to s to see, see to that, that that they were in school in time. All of that for me was more visceral than having mm -hmm. you know, just all the fuss and all the mm -hmm. drama. And I did make the mistake of saying that <laughs> there was no script for this movie. But what I actually meant was we had a treatment and we had an idea and we had a concept. And we had uh, Michael guiding us through it all. But the dialogues came from people, what they felt like at that moment. Riz and I worked a lot on um, how we were going to take our characters forward. Um, but I guess when there's if there's no direction in the first place, there's no film. So I guess having Michael very, very strongly know what he was going to do or what he was aiming at, what he was aiming at showing you people, um, made it very easy for Riz and I and for the whole for the whole cast, actually. Thank you. Let's have some questions and comments from you. Well, yeah, that's what I meant um, when I said that there was no script as such but dialogues written like you usually get, you know, a whole uh, spiral-bound script. But we had a treatment and we had the screenplay in terms of what Michael wanted us to do for that day, all the various scenes, and we would discuss that the night before. Well, obviously, there were things that we were trying to keep true to the novel, um, but also there were a lot of things that would change according to our circumstances in India, the, the setting over there, the changes that would obviously be brought about by the country that we're shooting the film in. Um, and in terms of 
coming up with dialogues, we'd obviously say whatever we had to say at that moment. We felt what Trishna and Jay would say. And if we were not on the right track, we would not hear, <laughs> we would just have to do it again, differently. So I guess Michael monitored everything that came out from our mouths, but ultimately I guess we had, we had to know what, who we were playing. We had to know our characters and that's I guess where the li dialogues came from. A lot of it felt, um, a lot of it actually, a lot of times I never knew what Riz was gonna say. So that would come, up, come as a total surprise to me and that would be my driving force for my next line. So I guess um, like you and I are having a conversation. Yeah, I mean, in, in the novel, there's two lovers. There's Alec and Angel, and Alec is the sort of sensual lover, and Angel is the spiritual lover. And from the beginning, I kind of thought it would be more interesting to try and combine those two, because partly because I think most people have you know both aspects in their character. Most relationships have both aspects, and it sort of felt to me that by simplifying it out to being the sort of the physical and the and the spiritual, that both characters in the novel uh, in the novel are a little bit frustrating. I love the book and I love Hardy, but I think both of the male characters are kind of frustrating because they're so kind of tied down to one aspect of, of, the, of the relationship. And I thought it'd be interesting to try and uh, put, uh, to make a character who has a kind of, uh, uh, has elements of both. But obviously it's a tricky kind of balance, and it's quite a subtle kind of shift to start, start with, you know, from someone who does kind of fall in love uh, with Trishna, but, but without really knowing her, and then to get from that point to the point at which you really want her to kind of, to finally kind of re react to him. And, uh, it w you know, I sort of think, you know, if it hadn't been, I, I think from a casting point of view, with both Frida and Riz, it was a question of like, I wanted those two people. There's no casting process. And to be honest, we, I don't think we would have made the film if it hadn't been for persuading those two people to try and do it. I do, but I think of it as my second Indian film because my first one was Slumdog Millionaire. And uh, for me, I think the story being true to the location and the place and the country that we're shooting at makes it the film of that place or that person. So similarly, this was a story about Trishna and Jay. It's set in Rajasthan, set in India with an entire Indian setting, Indian family. Doesn't matter if there's a, a, a foreign crew shooting the film as long as they're being true to what we're shooting and true to the story. So um, for me, it's pretty much my second Indian film. Yeah, absolutely different from me. I had trouble sometimes being passive. You know, I, I there was a scene where we were shooting where um, in the in the staff quarters when I was sitting with the girls and the girl was talking about how she would wanted to marry Jay and you know live a very very beautiful life. And I remember responding to it and Michael saying, "No, I think you just observe and listen and absorb." And I was like, somewhere inside me, I was actually suffocating because I wanted to say something. You know, but I pretty much understood that the key to making Trishna Trishna would be her, her just being passive, her just being. And I guess for me, the way I started was um, going to Rajasthan beforehand, meeting a lot of girls and listening to their stories and kind of seeing that 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 same passivity in all of them in, in, in a certain way. But they all had dreams and aspirations, but never the let's go and get it, you know. So I guess I kind of try to put that in, into myself as well. In terms of body language, I guess when you wear a costume like that and have a braid, which is not your everyday costume and walking on terrain like that, it comes automatically, I guess. But um, for me, it was, I guess, just being more internalized that changed everything in terms of body language and diction and all of that. Diction, yes, I had to work on. I wasn't speaking a language that I, was, um, that I normally speak. I speak in English at home and Hindi in, in back in India, but I was given the additional challenge by Michael to speak Marwadi, which is the local Rajasthani dialect. And for those who've been to Rajasthan and know what Marwadi sounds like, it changes every 100 kilometers. So I had you know, to spend a lot of time with the family and understand their um, dialect in order to make that my own.